Here we have pyrite, which is uh, more commonly known as fool's gold. Um, it's one of my favorite minerals, and it's one of our iron sulfides that we have here. You'll remember with chalcopyrite, we had um, lots of similar looking colors, but a little bit different, a little bit more muted because we're missing out on that copper. So with just the iron sulfide here, we've got pyrite and a bunch of different crystals to look at that I've picked for you. Um, so the first one that we'll look at is this one because this is more of a massive form of pyrite. So when I see pyrite as a common theme with these um, native elements, sulfides, things like that, first thing I see is a metallic luster. This thing is super duper shiny. Part of the reason why it gets its name is fool's gold. Um, it's definitely shinier than gold. Gold sometimes has a dull luster to it, um, but it's very bright. This is super duper shiny, high metallic luster. And we can see if we look close, that we've also got a bunch of crystal faces even on this sample here. So alone from the metallic luster, we do have this kind of color, um, which is more of a muted light gold color. As an example, I'll bring in that piece of gold that we saw earlier just for comparison. Um, let me get it out here. So here's that piece of gold, right, that we saw. Very different colors than um, than gold here. So it's gonna be a lot more muted, not as bright yellow, but a lot shinier too. And then as an example, I've got this chalcopyrite that we saw earlier too. Once again, with that addition of copper in there, this is gonna be way more colorful. Pyrite is a lot more muted. And we've got a couple different, so the first thing, obviously it's metallic luster. Next thing I look to see is for crystal forms, crystal faces, because pyrite loves to grow in really beautiful crystal face habits here. So if we look, and this will be easier too, if you had a hand sample and you had your hand lens out or something like that, it would be really easy to see these beautiful crystal forms. So on this side here, this sample, we can see that we've got these really nice crystal faces. And especially when we look in this pocket here where the crystals are a little bit larger, a little bit more well-formed, we have some really nice crystal faces. So pyrite is an isometric mineral, so we also wanna see really high symmetry crystals, especially if we're gonna have um, really beautiful crystal forms. And so here is an example of a pyrite cube, which is actually really common. So this is a nice little cube. This isn't a super perfect cube. We can still see kind of those steps that we're used to seeing in something like Galena, where it didn't have a perfect crystal face growth. And lots of times, because it'll um, generally toggle back and forth between different symmetry forms, so we'll have cubes. We could have this one, which is like a little um, pyritohedron, little five-sided shapes here. And it'll kind of go back and forth between these. And in those intergrowths, sometimes we see these lines that come up on a pyrite crystal. This is a really good example here, how we have this kind of waviness, this step pattern. Um, and that's, that's really um, normal to see in pyrite of not perfect cubes. So we have this here and this one, so cute and tiny. These can get huge, they can get really big. These are just a couple examples that we have here. So we've got a metallic luster, we've got a light um, yellowish kind of color, almost uh, silvery, um, beautiful crystal forms. That's one of those diagnostic properties. If it's got gray crystal faces and it looks metallic like this, and it's got this color, it's most likely pyrite. But you can always do a streak test to see if um, the streak matches. So with pyrite, we should be seeing something that's almost like this kind of greenish, grayish kind of color. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, and perfect. Kind of does that same effect where we had super bright chalcopyrite and it powderized into something um, really dull almost, very dark. The same thing's gonna happen with pyrite here. And that main difference really is gonna be that color too and these crystal forms. And it's pretty soft. Um, we could definitely um, it's not as soft as some others. Let's take our nail here and see if we can scratch it. Well, maybe not on the good crystal face. Let's find a different one here. Let's see if we can scratch this. And it's pretty darn hard to scratch. Now, don't forget that a nail is about, this nail is about 5.5 on the hardness scale. So we would need something harder like glass. 
we could see if it scratches glass. This glass is about a seven. So let's see if we can get a good scratch. And remember, this kind of stuff depends on your crystal um, faces, how well they're formed. We'll see if we can get a scratch. Well, see, because this isn't a great crystal, we've got a little bit of powderization, but when we wipe everything away, let's see what we get here. See, it's even powderized on my fingers. When we wipe everything away, we do have a scratch in the glass. So this one is a pretty hard sample, or this glass is a little bit softer than normal. So I'd say probably about six, 6.5 on the hardness scale. But the most indicative things is going to be the crystal form, the metallic luster, the color of it as well, and its density. This thing looks dense and it's pretty dense, not as dense as Galena, because we still don't have any of that lead in there, but iron we know is a pretty heavy thing. So um, there is pyrite for you.